that you took with you or can you show me to do? Uh, I try to try to sneak as much gore we can in it, but you know, we gotta be you can only you only have so much gore you can do that's practical. I, I come from practical, like I did make practical makeup effects and I like doing it camera stuff. But you can't do a lot of that in a Sharknado movie because you know you have sharks doing things you can't physically do. Uh, but we did like in the first movie we built a practical set in the swimming pool and we flooded it, which I thought was great. We tried doing it in this one, it didn't work out because we were in New York and didn't have time. Um, but you know, the, the opening of the movie, there, it's an homage to Twilight Zone. I mean, there's, there's a lot of like nice little references. Um, you know, I think the subway car sequence is really fun. Um, not, you know, I wanted to try to make some scarier moments, but it's, it's hard to do that with this stuff. It's, it's an action movie. It's got comedy. So, but um, you know, Jaws is the pinnacle of, of horror movies. You know, and it's a great film. You know, you can't touch that, but you know, you you're doing your own spin on things. So I don't know if I answered your question. Totally. No. Yeah. In, in the second one, you have some amazing guest stars, and they're all playing like iconic versions of their iconic characters. Like, yeah. Which came first? Did you get the actors wanted to do it, or did you write them like hoping? Well, the, the taxi cab, the Judd Hirsch, the taxi cab driver. I, I think originally we were thinking we wanted Henry Winkler only because we have a Jump the Shark reference around there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But but that didn't happen. But then they go, who do you want for this role? I'm going, well, let's get Je let's get Judd Hirsch, get someone from Taxi. And then suddenly we had Judd Hirsch. Oh my God, that man is amazing. <laughs> He's like, I think 79 maybe, and we were changing things left right. He's used to rigid TV, like like people like this. This dialogue needs to be this way, and and we're like, hey, let's block shoot like 12 pages of dialogue and let's change it all like an hour before we start shooting and he was like a, it was like a viper and nailed it and I would throw lines off the walkie talk because we were on a process where like hey Judd say this there's the line about the Jersey thing uh, where he goes uh, you can't get a chainsaw in Manhattan you have to go to Jersey for that and he, he was doing that like say this say this Judd and then he goes you don't want to go to Jersey for that. And he just nailed it. And it was all like literally spur of the moment, but we have someone that good there. And then the pilot bit at the beginning of the movie, we were originally thinking Shatner and Lithgow because it was an homage to the Twilight Zone. And then we go, what about Robert Haynes? You know, that would be really cool. And he did it. He agreed to it. That was, that was a blast. So yeah, so there's some of that, and then there's things where the night before you'd get a call going, hey, this person wants to be in the movie, write something for them. So, okay. And then you got to find a way to write it. I mean, it's a living organism every day. You go out to set, you have 18 days to shoot a movie like this. We shot it in February, we delivered it in June. We have over 700 visual effects. Try that, Superman. There's no way that, you know, say what you will about these movies, whether you hate it or love it or it's rough around the edges, but we pulled off the impossible on both movies. And I think that's part of the fun of the film, but it's not... It's not perfect, and it's not planned to a T. So there's room for things to happen organically. So what's your favorite uh, shark move in the um, I love the thing where Ian is on the, the, the fire truck, yeah. and he slices a shark in half. That, that you know, we needed something special, and I'm going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this thing, and I'm, I'm looking at it going. That's really phallic, I was like, no, no. It's like, but it worked. It, it worked really well. And and the, the this TG animator, uh, uh, Dennis, um, he did the shot originally, and it was just kind of a clean slice. And he, I guess he went to like some Discovery Channel store, and he found a half shark where all the internal organisms, like how they really are. And so he started obsessing about this, and he came back where you see the full real anatomy of what the inside of the shark is based because he just got inspired. And that's, that's the fun too. The CG guys are, are our partners in this. You know, they'll tell us what they can do or can't, but then they give you bonus things you would never expect. And that's, that's kind of cool too. They had less than two months to deliver all those shots. And there's some damn good shots in this movie. How exciting is it for you that this is uh, screened around the world at the same time? I mean, I know it's coming on it's at 4 o'clock in Germany in the it's morning. It's nuts! <laughs> Last year we thought no one would watch the movie. We thought stoners would be sitting there lighting up, and that, and that would be our audience because it was a weird film. It's like the perfect stoner movie, and then everybody embraced us, and, and, and now we're worldwide. I, Again, think about this. I mean, when the first movie, we didn't have a marketing budget. We didn't have like a, you know, people just showed up and found us. And now we're like this, this big TV event next week. That, that's, that's cool. I mean, as a filmmaker, you know, there, there's a lot of people that go, oh, I hate the movie. Oh, it's so bad. So it doesn't matter. Look, I'd rather have 
the movie be totally polarizing and have people watch it, then 10 people say, I loved your movie, and then no one else sees it. This is great. I mean, and, and, and we made a fun little movie, and, and, and people are embracing it. So the fact that we got the worldwide, and it happened last time really quickly. It like started rolling out, so everybody getting a day and date, I think, is going to be great. So what, what are you going to do? Are you going to watch the premiere with friends? Or? We haven't decided yet. Right, we keep talking about doing something in Los Angeles, so we just haven't figured it out yet. Got a, got a lot of stuff to figure out in a week, but we just finished the DVD and Blu-ray, so I've still been living this movie. I just QC'd the movie like two days ago, so I'm kind of sick of it. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I, it'd be nice now to kind of actually sit in an audience and watch it with people, and not go, oh wait, there's a frame, uh, we got to fix that. It's like just to see if everything works. We did that with the critics a couple weeks ago, and that was awesome. It's like wow, there were things that actually we got responses to in the end. But in editing, it's like, eh, I don't think it's going to play, and it played. So. Uh, I saw a quote, uh, you did an interview, and you talked about the hysteria that surrounded the making of the film in New York City, comparing it to the Avengers film, and, and like how, not not to that level, but compared to the first movie, oh, The Shark Movie? Well, what I meant by that yeah. was that um, the first movie we were shooting in Los Angeles, no yeah. one could care less yeah. we were making this movie. I mean, we could, we, we could roam around, get plate shots in LA, no one cared. But when we were in New York, the first day we were shooting outside the hotel, there were like people lining up around, paparazzi fans, and it was just like we were shooting a studio movie, and that was that was that was the, when we realized that there was a lot of people interested in this, just outside of the people that we thought were just our our fan base, and that that was and that was hard too because now we're having to shoot around instead of the bad weather. We're, the first or the, the perfect weather in the first movie, we were shooting around paparazzi. That whole taxi cab sequence with the water, we have if you look at the angles, it's trying to avoid the people surrounding us on the streets. So that was what why it, it was just really weird. You know, we couldn't go anywhere without people following us taking photos. And so we actually had to change things in the script so we wouldn't reveal things that happened later. Something happens to Tara. We pushed that off onto a stage date. It was supposed to happen in the middle of the movie because we knew if we went out and set with that, it would have been spoiled. 